Hello guys, I'm Yadagir Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Obsolete Beginners. In this video, we will see how we can execute a Java program from the command prompt. In my earlier video, we have already discussed about how we can write and execute the Java program from the Eclipse IDE. So we have seen with one IDE, now we will see without the IDE. So that means we will execute the program from the command prompt. But why do we need to learn this? So the answer is when you are working with the Eclipse IDE or any IDE, right? Like IntelliJ or Eclipse or NetBeans, you don't actually learn what is happening inside the IDE. Okay. So when you execute any Java program, you don't actually know what is happening inside, how many steps are involved and from where it is actually picking the tools and what commands it is executing. So those things you don't actually learn. Okay. For example, if you see, so this is the program we have created in our last video, right? So if I want to execute this, I'll simply right click on this program. I'll go to run as and Java application. So it is very user friendly, right? So here I'm not entering any command or anything. I'm going with the UI. So if I right click on this, there is a menu in that menu. I have an option to run the program. So I'm just clicking on that button and the program execution is completed and it is giving the output, right? So now we will see what exactly is happening inside this one. So that is the reason I'm going to execute these programs from the command prompt. So let me just copy the program. So I'll create one folder here. I'll name it as test. So inside this folder, I want to create the file. Okay. So here to save the file, you can use any editor basically. So by default, our operating system comes with the notepad, right? So I will use the notepad to edit the file. So here, let me just paste it. So this is the file. I'm going to save this file. So into the test folder. So here I'll provide the name also program one dot Java. So if you directly save like this, it will save with dot txt extension. Okay. So you need to enclose this one inside double quotes and just click on save. So now the program is saved. You can see here the type of the program is Java file. Okay. So now I want to execute this program from the command prompt. So to open the command prompt, I'll type CMD in the run. So now you can see the command prompt is open. Okay. So here we need to perform three operations. Those are first, we need to navigate to the folder where the file is actually saved. So the file is saved here. So we need to navigate to that folder. After navigating to that folder, we need to compile the file. Okay. So here we have one Java file. So this Java file, I need to compile first. So in the Java, we have two steps, right? If you want to execute any program, we need to first compile the program, then execute the program. But when you're working with any IDE, you don't actually compile it because internally it will compile when you execute the run command. Okay. So when you just click on run internally, the compilation will happen. Then only it will execute. So now here, the second step is I need to compile the program. And the third step is I need to execute the program. Okay. So first thing first, I need to navigate to this folder. Okay. So I will use CD space, the folder name. So here we have navigated to the folder. So now we will perform the second operation that is compiling the program. So how we can compile the program to compile the program in Java, we have a command called Java C. So this Java C command is available inside the Java installation directory bin folder. So here you can see Java C. So that is the reason we actually set this bin folder path in the system environment variables. Okay. Even the Eclipse also uses this Java C command only to compile the program. So that is why if Eclipse also wanted to identify this command, right? The system should know where this command is actually located. So that is the reason we actually specify this path in the environment variables. So now I will use Java C command and the syntax is Java C space your file name. So here the file name is program one dot Java. So I'll just copy the complete thing. And I'll paste it here. Okay. So the file name you have to give with the extension also here. So now if I just press enter, so it is not throwing any error, right? So that means the compilation is successful. And if you go to the test folder here, you can see basically we have only program one dot java file right but now we got extra file that is program one dot class so this file we call it as a class file or we can call it as a byte code okay so in the java when you compile any program it will generate the class files and that class file is also called as byte code okay 
So now if I just copy this class file into any operating system, it will work. So that is what the platform independency is. So now I need to run this file. Okay. So while executing, we don't actually execute the Java file. We execute the class file. So here we need to provide the class name. Class name means only the file, this one, not with the extension. So to execute, I have a command called Java, Java space. The class name is program one, right? So here you don't have to provide any extension. So let me just press enter. So here you can see the output. Hello world, HYR tutorials, right? So we don't have any exceptions in the program. So that is why it is giving the output. So if you have any exceptions here, it will show you that exception. Okay. So now you got the idea, right? How we execute the Java program and what actually happens internally. It is very simple guys. First we use the Java C command to compile the program. Then we use the Java command to execute the program. Okay. So when you use the Java C command to compile the program, it will create the class file, right? So that class file name will be always the class name. So here the class name is program one. So that is the reason it is creating this program one dot class. Okay. So if you modify the class name here, then your dot class file name also will be modified. So here the Java C command, we provide the Java file name and in the Java command, we provide the class name. Okay. So that is how we actually execute the program from the command prompt. So I hope you got some idea, right? What is actually happening behind the Eclipse or IntelliJ or NetBeans screen? So you may have one doubt. So here I can see the Java files, but I don't see any dot class files, right? So if I run this program internally, it is compiling. That is what I'm saying, right? But I don't see any dot class file here. So where this dot class file is going. So if you just open this one, I'll go to the project location. So this is the project location, right? So if you go inside, so in the SRC folder, we always have the Java files. Okay. So this is the Java file program one dot Java. So here in the project, you will have one folder called bin. So inside this bin folder, the dot class file will be generated here. Okay. So this bin folder is actually hidden from the Eclipse. So here you don't see that bin folder, but that bin folder is actually present in your operating system only. So this bin folder and settings folder are hidden from the Eclipse. So that is how the Eclipse is actually identifying the class file also. So it will generate the class file, but it will generate the class file in a different directory and while execution, it will use that directory to execute. So now you got the idea, right? So this is how we basically execute the program from the command prompt. So that is for this video guys. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or if you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.